if we're ever gonna colonize this place, or spend an extended amount of time here, or even try to survive in changing climates on our own planet, we're gonna need crack warts? And people called it crack wart. There's lots of different common names for Arabidopsis. Essentially, it's a weed. Plant biologists Annalisa Paul and Robert Furl at the University of Florida Gainesville Space Plants Lab grow the humble weed Arabidopsis on purpose to find clues about how plants behave in extreme conditions, such as... How do plants grow differently uh, on orbit or on the moon or on Mars? Spaceflight in particular is something that no organism on the face of the Earth has experienced ever in its evolutionary history. So. So, so how do you deal with that? We're really intrigued by what metabolic tools a plant will, will dip into to deal with something that it has no experience with. Dr. Paul and Dr. Furl use glow-in-the-dark markers that show which genes are turned on when the plants are stressed. Then they strap Arabidopsis in for some unique situations, like parabolic flight, which mimics the weightlessness of space. Parabolic flight is a very uh, interesting and exciting thing for plants and plant biologists. Plants know when they're in a jet airplane. Uh, they don't know that in their brains because they don't have them, but it's recorded in their metabolism. Plants are just exquisitely sensitive to changes in their environments. They can't go anywhere, and so they become the masters of their metabolic universe. They can respond um, even in the first 30 seconds of a parabolic set. The parabolic flights also help the researchers figure out which experiments would work, or not, for astronauts in zero-g. Then, it's blast-off time. Arabidopsis seeds were placed in cassettes with nutrient gel and launched to the International Space Station. Once on board, they're placed in a growth chamber, with some cassettes receiving more light than others. Astronauts monitored the 12-day experiments before returning the aged Arabidopsis back to Earth, where Dr. Paul and Dr. Furl were waiting to analyze their growth. You know, on Earth, we usually grow them vertically, and so, you know, we grow them on a vertical surface, and then the, the roots will grow pretty much straight down the surface of the plates. When you grow them in space, you think about it, there's, there's no gravity to tell the roots which way to grow. One idea would be that in the absence of gravity, the plant roots would simply wander around aimlessly. Uh, another expectation might be that if light was a strong enough cue, they would simply grow in a single direction away from the light. At first, the space plants grew down the plate like they would on Earth, but then the Arabidopsis that were grown further from the light did something different. At about the five-day mark, they started to do this characteristic, what we call skewing, this kind of jog to the left. Since the times of Darwin in the 1800s, it's been understood that this angled growth of roots, the skewing, was due to gravity. Instead of gravity guiding its growth, Arabidopsis used light. A closer look at the proteins involved in plant behavior revealed that 480 genes underwent significant changes during spaceflight. Next, Dr. Paul and Dr. Furl will delve deeper into these changes, even growing plants in the dark. Their testing could help us become better farmers in extreme conditions on Earth and in suborbital vehicles, paving the way for taking plants to the Moon and Mars. Plants have a very key role in keeping humans alive in long-term spaceflight. It's simply impractical, it's very difficult. It costs too much jet fuel, too much rocket fuel, too much nuclear fuel to boost all of our food to the surface of Mars and have it be there for enough years to keep a human colony alive. Who knows, this lowly pioneering plant could one day become an intrepid Mars explorer.